News dropped over the weekend. We know now from uh, CCTV, that's a Chinese state network, that the Huawei here in X90 is going to be a five nanometer chip. Was announced on CCTV over the weekend. And this is just, I mean, it's crazy. Right? It's absolutely tremendous news for Huawei because this was not built with ARM technology. It doesn't have, of course, it doesn't have any Intel licensing. Not that anybody uses Intel anymore, x86. Uh, but it's not ARM based. This is a 100% internally developed with their IP, developed in China, chipped. It's homegrown. And they're going to be using it to power their ecosystem. We know it's going to be used to power the uh, MateBook Pro, MateBook Fold lineup of PCs that's just been announced. And which, by the way, saw 180,000 pre-orders. And let me talk about gadgets real quick because you know here at Ruben Tech, the intersection of politics, tech, and finance, we love gadgets. Please take a moment and hit the like and subscribe button down below. For the price of a cup of coffee, you can support the channel. If you wish to, that MateBook Fold is a beautiful device, absolutely gorgeous. One screen. You might say, Ruben, there's other PCs out there like that. No, there is not. Everything else that's been released, it's two screens with a hinge. This is one screen. There's phones out there like this, but there are no PCs. But now Huawei has a chip, the Kirin X90, five nanometers, going to be powering their wearables. Uh, uh, their phones, which they sell millions of, their laptops, their PCs, right? It's powering an entire ecosystem of devices, pads, and nobody has this level of vertical integration. Apple has IPs, however, they license from ARM. They build with TSMC. By next year, Huawei could be running these fabs out of their own production centers which would be mind-blowingly crazy. A lot of people reporting that these chips were uh, developed with SMIC. However, it's come out that they're likely not developed with SMIC, but SI Carrier, multi-pattern DUV, what is that? It's just where you take DUV and to get more transistors, you imprint it once on the silicone, you imprint it twice, three, four times. So you're just putting a pattern on four times that you want. Five nanometer process. So we do know that Huawei, as we discussed on here, when they leaked those photos of their EUV lithography, they have an extremely aggressive timeline. I know a lot of people got mad at me because I said, I'm skeptical of their timeline, not that they can develop the technology of their timeline. I just want to emphasize that. I'm not putting anything besides Huawei out of their reach right now. Jensen Wong has said that they are the most formidable tech company in all of China. So I'm not saying they can't make the EUV. I'm just saying that their timeline seems pretty aggressive to me. And I've worked in tech all my life, and a lot of people have made aggressive timelines, and usually we're late. But who knows if they'll be late or not. And even if they are late, it doesn't matter because the significance isn't if it comes out in Q1 or Q2 or Q3 of next year. The significance is, again, about the stack, how they will be developing their own chip, Oh, they're using their own technology. They're not licensing it from ARM. Remember, with networking, they're not, you know, they don't have to go to anybody else for networking. They, they are, before export controls began, they were the original leader in networking technology. So it's not like Google and Apple, Microsoft, they have to go out and they have to license the ARM design. They have to go out and they have to license the modem from somebody else, where they're taking all these different parts and they're licensing it from people. And building these chips, which are very nice chips, but in a sort, sort of a way, they're Frankenstein chips, parts from here, parts from Qualcomm, et cetera, et cetera. Xiaomi has to do that too. It was reported that Xiaomi released their first internally developed chip. But remember, they actually licensed ARM. They're having it built at TSMC. Not so with Huawei. This is their own internal IP. So you might say, Ruben, you've been covering that for three minutes. Yes, the significance of this cannot be understated because it falls in line with what President Xi said over the weekend. He he said, if the West is going to continue acting like this, and by West, I do believe he means President Donald Trump, 
that then China is going to have to really continue to focus on its internal self-reliance. I, I know I have a lot of Chinese that watch my channel and you're like, yes, you know, we can do it. And I believe you absolutely can, but I do believe you should listen to President Xi too when he says that mutually beneficial cooperation with other countries is to everyone's benefit. And that's the path to go. So this is what bugs me, is that right now the policy of President Trump, I think he's being misguided. Because what he's trying to do is he's trying to put, he's trying to isolate China. And it's not going to work. Because they're just going to develop their own self-reliance and they're going to be able to get there. There's no stopping them at this point. There is no stopping. Huawei just announced that it's going to have enough cloud matrix chips to satisfy internal demand and developer demand in China. So there's no stopping them. You just need to compete. And Jensen Wong has not criticized President Trump, as he shouldn't. He's in a precarious position. But he has criticized export controls, saying they haven't worked, saying that he wants to compete in China, saying that Huawei should be able to keep compete. He wants to go head-to-head -head with these guys, which I think it would be beneficial to everybody. So I find it unfortunate that right now Trump has been misguided on his policy. And I say he has been misguided because he's a, <laughs> President Trump, I, I, this isn't giving him a pass. I just believe that he doesn't understand these matters well so that other people are pulling the strings. And that, you know, if you look at Syria, he can have these breakthrough moments where he'll do something that's radically different than the status quo. Like we're lifting the sanctions on Syria. Joe Biden wouldn't have did that. Any of you running the middle of Republicans wouldn't have done that. President Trump did. And so if anybody can have a breakthrough in their, in their thinking of East versus West, it would be President Trump. But it's hard to tell if this is his thinking or if it's somebody that's guiding him. If it's his thinking, then probably he's not going to ever change his mind. Because he just seems like one of those kind of people where he digs into something. But if it's the people around him, then somebody could come up from the outside and start giving them better information. Let them know that this isn't going to work out and it's not going to benefit anyone. He says he has great respect for President Xi. And together they could get come to a deal that could be beneficial for everyone. But also, at a minimum, the United States government with this export guidance... Now we know that their likely statement that they threaten substantial penalties to people, substantial criminal and civil penalties for people using the Ascend series of chips. Now we know that the U.S. government really needs to prove those claims. Why do I say now? Well, to be clear, I've always said, they, I've always said that they should prove those claims because it leaves people in limbo. If you're in Europe or if you're in Australia or you're anywhere, you know, even in China, and you you have a startup, and you need chips, and the NVL seventy two is not available to you, either because of export controls or because of because just through supply and demand. And the cloud matrix three eight four is available. You don't want to be left thinking, "Oh, am I going to be arrested?" I mean, imagine having to think that. Well, I can't start my startup. Imagine if you're in that predicament; it would be awful. And now they really have to prove it. Why? Because if the Kirin X90 is producing, think about what they have these chips, 200,000 uh, capacity for pre-orders. They took 180,000 pre-orders, or sorry, 200,000 capacity first three months of production. Took 180,000 pre-orders. They're selling millions of phones. They got these wearables. And now they're saying that they have the demand ready, forecasted, or the supply ready for the forecasted demand on AI training, et cetera, for developers and companies in China. There is no way, in my opinion, that all of those can be stolen chips from NVIDIA. So that's what I got for you guys today. Let me know what you think down below. Kirin X90 confirmed, 5 nanometers. Uh, oh, did I mention I also, it was noted that some people thought they were going to be built with SMIC, but it looks like the reports are actually that they're being built with SI Carrier. I think I said that already. Sorry, I've said a lot of stuff. 
That's significant. But remember, next year they could be running off of their own EUV lithography machines out of China. So that's what I got for you guys. Just an informal update. Saw this news, and the first thing I thought of is these export controls, they're not working. They need to be revisited. Absolutely. Or at the very least, they need to be proven. If you agree with me or disagree with me, let me know down below what you think. Please hit like and subscribe. Have a great day. Bye.